This video is an overview of the various types of drones used in aerial imagery. First, I'm going to talk about the large and heavy drones that can lift big professional cameras. And then I'll cover the more consumer level and prosumer models that are much smaller and lightweight. And last, we'll show you some micro drones that are great for fun, casual use, or practice. The shrinking size of digital cameras, as well as their improved image quality and battery life, has made it possible and affordable to get great aerial images from lightweight RC aircraft. The concept isn't really new. Uh, we've had the technology to do this for quite a while, but it's finally reached a point where now it's much more accessible for the average person. Just a few short years ago, the only option was to build a custom drone that had enough lifting power to lift your camera. Many of these rigs were fully manual and required a very skilled pilot to operate. Crashes were really expensive uh, to get the high-end video. People would build an aircraft big enough to lift full-size DSLR cameras or other professional cameras. You can still build or buy these types of kits today, uh, but they are incredibly expensive. Some of them cost up to $15,000 or $20,000. The motion picture industry and high-level video production teams are using these types of platforms to lift uh, large professional cinema cameras. Here's a look at some of the custom configurations. Uh, first off, we have the standard quadcopter. This is uh, four motors. You can see here we have an I-4 configuration and an X-4 configuration. These are uh, pretty much exactly the same. The I-4 has the front of the quadcopter in line with one of the booms. So you can see there's only one boom in front. The X-4 just means that there are two booms in front and the front of the quadcopter is between those two booms. Now I'll also mention here that each motor on the quadcopter spins in the opposite direction of the motor next to it. Uh, this is to keep the quadcopter stable. Now along with that, there are two different types of propellers. So one propeller is meant to spin counterclockwise and the other one is meant to spin clockwise. And so if you're building or assembling a quadcopter, you need to make sure that you have the right style of prop on the right motor. Both propellers provide lift in the same direction, but only if they're spinning in the correct direction for the style of propeller that they are. On most ready-to-fly models, like the Phantom quadcopters, there's a marking on the propeller and the motor shaft to indicate which propellers go with which, which motors. We have the hexcopter. This is just like the quadcopter, only there are six motors. And again, you have an I6 or X6 configuration. With more motors, you have more lift capacity, so you can lift heavier payloads, bigger cameras. You also have some redundancy. If you lose a motor on a quadcopter or you damage a prop, you pretty much have no ability to land safely. If you lose one motor or one prop, that thing's gonna tumble out of the air. But with a hexcopter, you might lose the ability to rotate the hexcopter or yaw it around, but you should still be able to land safely with six motors. There's a few other interesting configurations of hexcopters, the IY6 and the Y6, and so you still have six motors but you have two motors per boom spinning in opposite directions. The advantage of this is it's much more compact than the standard I6 configuration. And so this is just another option. They call this a inverted or coaxial configuration where you have two motors per boom. Okay, moving on, we have the I8 or V8 configurations. Again, just like the hexcopter, uh, except that now we have eight motors. Uh, you can lose a motor on one of these and not even notice. There's enough redundancy with the eight motors that you could lose a motor or a prop and still be able to fly just fine, I'd be able to come down and land, and you may not even be able to tell that you've lost a prop or motor until you've uh, landed and inspect your octocopter up close. And finally, we have the X8 configuration, so just like the hexcopters, you can make a coaxial version, two motors per boom, four booms, that's eight motors in total for the X8. So each of these configurations has its advantage and disadvantage. With more motors, you'll be able to lift heavier loads, and you also do gain some redundancy in case one of those props or motors goes out. So that's a look at the heavy lifting category of drones. The cost involved with these larger platforms is getting hard to justify when you can now shoot 4K video with the GoPro or the built-in camera on the DJI Phantom or the Inspire One. As these small cameras continue to improve in quality, I believe that these heavy lifting drones will become more and more rare. The DJI Inspire One Pro now has a micro four thirds camera with interchangeable lenses. This kit costs around 5,000 US dollars and that's still substantially cheaper than a custom platform built to carry a, an equivalent camera or a more professional camera. Lastly, I wanted to show you some micro drones. 
These little guys are getting more and more sophisticated and some of them even have built-in cameras. These are ideal for learning how to fly because they're so inexpensive and durable. Amazon is a great place to find these micro drones as well as Hobby King. And we'll talk about this in a later lesson, but I highly recommend getting one of these cheap micro drones to practice on. It's a lot better to crash and get your experience in on one of these small, cheap, inexpensive drones than a more expensive aircraft. You can build up your muscle memory and get familiar with the controls and how these things fly before risking a much more expensive model. In the next lesson, we'll be talking about how to choose a drone for taking aerial images and video.